हेलो दोस्तों स्वागत है आपका इस चैनल आई वी जिंदगी में तो आज हम देखने जा रहे हैं इकोनॉमी रिवीजन करेंगे ए पी सी प्रॉब्लम्स के लिए हम रिवीजन कर रहे हैं तो इकोनॉमी देखेंगे तो लिस्ट ऑफ फाइव ईयर प्लान्स ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी आखिरकार ये फाइव ईयर प्लान का इंडियन इकोनॉमी में आया कहाँ से तो ये पहला जो विश्वेश्वराया प्लान था वो विश्वेश्वराया प्लान के बारे में कुछ जान लेते हैं हम Era of Economic Planning, India started with Vishweswaraya 10 year plan. Sir M. Vishweswaraya published a book titled Planned Economy in India in 1934, wherein he presented a draft to double the national income in decade. He proposed to shift the labor from the agrarian state setup to the industries, thereby उन्होंने प्रपोज किया कि शिफ्ट कर देंगे लेबर इंडस्ट्री को फ्रॉम एग्रेरियन सेटअप टू द इंडस्ट्रीज देयर बाय एडवोकेटिंग फॉर डेमोक्रेटिक कैपिटलिज्म सिमिलर टू द यूएसए विद एम्फेसिस ऑन इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन हाउएवर देयर वाज नो फॉलो अप ऑफ दिस प्लान इन ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट इट सक्सेसफुली स्टेड एंड अर्ज फॉर नेशनल प्लानिंग अमंग द एजुकेटेड सिटीजन ऑफ द कंट्री सेकंड इज नेशनल प्लानिंग कमेटी तो दूसरा जो है फाइव ईयर प्लान वो नेशनल प्लानिंग कमेटी है तो फाइव ईयर प्लान हिस्ट्री ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स प्लानिंग इन इंडिया के बारे में हम देख रहे हैं तो जो नेशनल प्लानिंग कमेटी था वो इट वाज़ द फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट टू डेवलप अ नेशनल प्लान फॉर इंडिया एमेंडेटेड इन 1938 विद द सेटअप ऑफ नेशनल प्लानिंग कमेटी अंडर द चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ जवाहरलाल नेहरू हाईवर बिकॉज ऑफ द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वार टू द रिपोर्ट ऑफ द कमेटी कुड नॉट बी प्रिपेयर पेपर्स Finally came out after independence in 1948-49. Third is Bombay Plan. Eight leading industries and technocrats formulated a draft titled title दिया गया. Eight leading industries और technocrats से formulate किया draft. वो title दिया गया. A brief memorandum outlining a plan for of economic development of India under the editorship of Purushottam Das Thakur Das in 1944. This draft is known as Bombay Plan. तो इससे जुड़ी और The basic objective of the plan was doubling of the output of the agriculture sector and five-fold growth in the industrial sector in 15 years. A key principle of the Bombay plan was that the economy could not grow without government intervention and regulation. So officially, this plan was never accepted. However, its ideas were replicated in future economic plans. People's plan. People's plan was drafted by Hammond Roy. The Communist leader on behalf of the post war reconstruction committee of the Indian Federation of Lahore in 1944. It was based on Marxist socialism and gave primacy to agriculture. It advocated for the nationalization of agriculture and all production activities. People's plan fourth may people's plan or draft Kyagat Amman Roy Kedwara Juki Communist leader on behalf of the post war reconstruction committee of the Indian Federation of Lahore in 1944. Next to fact है pre-plan people's plan से related it was based on Marxist Marxist socialism and gave primacy to agriculture it advocated for the nationalisation of agriculture and all production activities Gandhi and plan fifth में आया तो Gandhi and plan was drafted by Asen Agarwal the principal of Ardha Commercial College in 1944 the plan articulated a decentralised economic structure for for India with self-contained villages next जो fact है Gandhi and plan से related Unlike the National Planning Committee and Bombay Plan, the plan laid more emphasis on agriculture. Then the next fact is and whether industrialization was talked about it, uh, about it is stressed upon promoting cottage and village level industry. Next I have Sarvodaya plan. This plan this plan by drafted by J. Varghasnarayan in 1950. It was inspired by Gandhian plan and we know of his principle of self-reliance. It laid stress upon agriculture as well as small and cotton industries. It advocated self-sufficiency by curtailing the use of foreign technology and implementing land reforms and decentralized participatory planning. So next I have planning commission. So after independence, the Economic Progress Committee was formed by the All India Congress Committee. Pandey Jawal Nair was its chairman. In 1948, this committee recommended the formation of the planning commission. Economic Program Committee, which was the All India Congress Committee, formed by the All India Congress Committee. 1948 में इस कमेटी रिकमेंडेशन रिकमेंड द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द प्लानिंग कमीशन इट वाज 
an extra constitutional body charged with the responsibility of formulating five year plans national development council it was founded on 6 august 1952 it uh, presided over by the prime minister it is the apex body for the decision creating and deliberation on the development matter in india it gives the final approval to the five year plan of india so summary of first three five year plans after independence first plan time prime objective and remarks first plan 1951 से 56 के बीच में फोकस था एग्रीकल्चर में प्राइस स्टेबिलिटी में और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में इट वाज बेस्ड ऑन हेरेड डोमर मॉडल ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी डिपेंड्स अपॉन इन्वेस्टमेंट रेट एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ कैपिटल इन अ पॉजिटिव मैनर तो सेकंड है वो सेकंड प्लान था और टारगेट था ग्रोथ का 4.5% एक्चुअल ग्रोथ हुआ 4.27% 1957 56 टू 50 61 फोकस था रैपिड इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन में इट वाज नोन एज महा Mahalana Bosis plan advocated planning shift from agriculture to industries it laid emphasis on heavy and basic industries also advocated import substitution export pessimism and over value exchanges third plan jo tha wo target tha ki growth ho 5.6% ka actual growth hua 2.84% ka post 1961 se 1966 ke beech mein focus tha heavy and basic industries mein which was then shifted to agriculture with pl480 due to two wars parts due to two wars wars with china 1962 and wars with pakistan 1965 and severe drought of 1965 to 66 it fell on many fronts 1966 से 67, 67 से 68, 68 से 69 वेर एनुअल प्लान्स, डिसकंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ़ फाइव ईयर प्लानिंग फॉर थ्री कंसेक्यूटिव ईयर इज़ रिगार्डेड एस प्लान हॉलिडे। ड्यू टू द प्रीवेलिंग फूड क्राइसिस एनुअल प्लान्स वेर प्राइमरीली फोकस्ड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर। ड्यूरिंग दिस प्लान्स द फाउंडेशन ऑफ़ द ग्रीन � Exploitation of irrigation potential during this year, the stocks of a third-year plan were absorbed, and five-year planning system was resumed from 1969. So, summary of 4 to 12 five-year plans. So, plans time frame objective and remarks. So, fourth plan target growth 5.7 percent, actual growth 3.30 percent. 1969 to 1974. Focus was on self-sufficiency and food and self-reliance. Because the war was. पाकिस्तान के साथ तो उस समय अमेरिका मना कर दिया था अमेरिका से हमें हमने मदद मांगा था कि कुछ गेहूं का सप्लाई हो जाए तो उन्होंने मना कर दिया था तो इसलिए सेल्फ सफिशेंसी इन फूड एंड सेल्फ रिलायंस का फोकस था जो फोर्थ प्लान था ऑब्जेक्टिव वर्क था कि टू इम्प्रूव डोमेस्टिक फूड प्रोडक्शन एम कर था कि नो टू फॉरन एड क्योंकि उस समय मदद मांगा गया था तो मदद मिला नहीं था फर्स्ट ऑयल शॉक कटर ऑफ 1973 मेड रेमिटेंस एस मेजर सोर्स ऑफ फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व्स एक प्लान टारगेट ग्रोथ 4.4 परसेंट एक्चुअल ग्रोथ 4.8 परसेंट 1974 टू 1979 फोकस था रिमूवल ऑफ पॉवर्टी एंड अटेनमेंट ऑफ सेल्फ रिलायंस में डाफ्टेड एंड लॉन्च बाय डीडी धार दिस प्लान वाज टर्मिनेटेड इन द ईयर 1978 There were rolling plan for the year 1978 to 1979 and 1979 to 1980. Removal of poverty and attainment of self-reliance. It was drafted and launched by T. D. Dhar. This plan was terminated in the year 1978. There was rolling plan for the year 1978 to 9 and 79 to 80. Sixth plan target growth 5.2 percent, actual growth 5.4 percent. 1980 to 1985 focus the poverty eradication and productivity enhancement stressed upon modernization of technology for the first time the frontal attack was made on poverty by adopting ambitious poverty eradication programs to pehla bar jo karibi mein dhyan diya gaya tha 1985 se 6th year 6th 5 year plan mein 7th 5 year plan mein hua kya ki growth tha target ka 5% actual growth hua 6.0% to 1985 to 1996 5 year plan focus the productivity and work may so that is employment generation so for the first time the private sector got priority over the public sector due to volatile political situation at the center two annual plans were commenced for the year 1992 1991 and 1991 to 1992 8th 5 year plan target growth 5.6% actual growth 6.8% 1992 से 1997 में 
to focus the plan with a human face that is a human resource development during this plan new economic policy was launched with lpg liberalization privatization and globalization it gave primacy to human capital and the private sector at five year plan ke dauran lpg reform aaya tha 1920 1992 to 1997 ninth five year plan jo tha target growth 7.1% actual growth 6.8% tha focus tha growth with justice and equity it is stress upon four dimension quality of life generation of productive employment regional balance and self reliance 10th five year plan target tha growth 188.1% actual growth tha 7.7% 2002 se 2007 ke beech mein it was aimed to double the per capita income of india in the next 10 year and to reduce the poverty ratio by 15% by 2012 11th plan target tha growth ka 8.1% actual growth was 7.9% 2007 se 2012 focus tha faster growth and more inclusive growth 12th five year plan 2012 se 2017 target tha growth 8% focus tha faster more inclusive growth and sustainable growth to niti aayog ka formation hota hai uske baad niti aayog the national institute transforming india as a policy think tank of government of india established in 2015 it replaced the planning commission it has a dual objective of achieving sustainable development goals and uh, to enhance cooperative federalism with bottom to top approach its in, initial in, include action plan 3 years strategy plan 7 years vision plan 15 years तो 25 साल का प्लान लेके चले हैं एक्शन प्लान 3 साल स्ट्रेटजी प्लान 7 साल विजन प्लान 15 साल तो हम नेशनल इनकम जीडीपी जीएनपी एनएनपी पर्सनल इनकम ये सेक्टर है सबके बारे में जानते हैं आखिरकार है क्या ये सब तो नेशनल इनकम तो नेशनल इनकम जो है इज यूजुअली डिफाइंड एज द नेशनल इनकम इज यूजुअली डिफाइंड एज द टोटल वैल्यू ऑल फाइनल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ कंट्री इन अ पर्टिकुलर पीरियड जनरली वन ईयर फॉलोइंग आर द मेजर्ड ऑफ नेशनल इनकम जीडीपी जीएनपी एनएनपी पीआई डीपीआई तो जीएनपी जीडीपी होता है ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट जीएनपी होता है ग्रॉस नेशनल प्रोडक्ट एनएनपी होता है नेट नेशनल प्रोडक्ट पीआई होता है पर्सनल इनकम डीपीआई होता है डिस्पोजल पर्सनल इनकम तो जीडीपी जो है वो ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट है तो जीडीपी इज द टोटल वैल्यू ऑफ ऑल फाइनल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस्ड विद इन द जियोग्राफिकल बाउंड्री ऑफ द कंट्री ड्यूरिंग अ पर्टिकुलर पीरियड जनरली वन ईयर इन दिस we consider all goods or services produced by both resident citizens and foreign national who reside within the boundary of that country example suppose there are 100 crore indians who earn rupees 100 crores in indian territory and 1 crore foreigners who earn rupees 10 crore in indian territory and send it to their respective countries at the same time the 10 crores indian living in foreign countries earn rupees 4 40 crores and send it to india her gdp is 100 plus 10 100 crore gross national product gnp is defined as the total value of the final goods and services produced by indians in india as well as abroad during a particular period gnp include the value of goods produced by resident and non resident citizens of country whereas the income of a foreigner who reside in india is excluded example suppose there are 100 crore indians who earn 100 crores in india indian territory and 1 crore foreigners who earn 10 crores in indian territory and send it to their respective countries at the same time 10 crore indians living in foreign countries and 40 crores and send it to india so our gnp is 100 plus 40 crore and we can say that gdp is gdp plus net factor income from abroad export import gnp 110 plus 40 minus 10 remittances come in export and outward remittances in import
net national product it is calculated by deducting depreciation from gross national product net national product it is calculated by deducting depreciation from gross domestic product gross national product minus depreciation factor cost market price factor cost cost in occurred to produce goods and services market price for calculating market price we add in direct tax and deduct subsidy is given by the government in factor cost market price equal to factor cost plus indirect tax minus subsidy net national product at factor cost is equal to net national product at market price minus indirect tax plus subsidy net national product at factor cost equal to net national product at market price minus indirect tax plus subsidy usually we call net national product at factor cost as a national income I usually we call net national product at factor cost as national income. Likewise, net national product at factor cost. We can also calculate GDP at factor cost. Personal income, it is the sum of all the income received by people of the country in one year. Personal income equal to national income plus transfer payment minus undisclosed profit of corporate plus payments for social security provision. Transfer payments are the payments that are not against any productive work, for example, old age pension. Unemployment compensation, etc. Social security provision, payment made by employees towards PF insurance, etc. Disposable personal income, income available to individual after deducting direct taxes. Disposable personal, disposable personal income equal to personal income minus direct taxes. Real income and nominal income. If we use base here, price for calculating national income, this is called the real income. If we use base here for calculating national income, this is called the real income. If we use base year price for calculating national income, this is called the real income. If we use the particular year price for calculating national income, this is called the national income. GDP deflator used to calculate overall price rise. Estimation of national income in India in 1868, Dada Vainaruzi wrote a book, Poverty and British Role in India. It was the first attempt to the calculation of national income. The first person to estimate national income scientifically was Dr. B.K. R. V. Rao, who estimated national income for the period 1925 to 1929. After independence, National Income Committee was formed in 1949 under the chairmanship of P.C. Mahalogonosis. After some years, Central Statistic Organization was formed. Various prices in index in India CPI, WPI, CPL. Various prices, price index, indices in India. Various weight lifted price indices are calculated in India, though these are wholesale price index, old consumer price index, consumer price index for industrial workers, CPI, consumer price index for urban non manual employees, consumer price index for agriculture laborers. Consumer Price Index for Rural Laborers New Consumer Price Index Introduced in Parvati Dojagara CPI Rural, CPI Urban, CPI Confined Mind Consumer Food Price Index Till April 2014, the inflation rate was measured with the help of WPI Wholesale Price Index Currently in India, inflation rate is measured with the help of Consumer Price Index Combined Wholesale Price Index It measures the change in the price of commodities traded in the wholesale market It is also known as headline inflation currently Current base year to Yargaras Bara, the index basket of the current series has a total of chess and then items exosata. Satra items for primary article, sixteen items for fuel and power, and Pancho Chamsat items for manufactured products. Published by Economic Advisor Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Old Consumer Price Index. Consumer Price Index for Industrial Worker, CPI, IW. It measures the change in the price of commodities consumed by the industrial workers. Current base year to Yargaras, published by Labor Bureau. Consumer Price Index for Urban Non-Manual Employees CPI UNME It measures the change in the price of commodities consumed by the non-manual employees Published by CSO Central Statistics Office Ministry of Statistics It has been discontinued Consumer Price Index for Agriculture Levers It measures the change in the price of commodities consumed by agriculture levers It is a subset of CPI RL Current Base Year 1966-87 Published by Labor Bureau Used for revising minimum wages Consumer Price Index for Rural Laborers CPI RL It measures the change in the price of commodities consumed by rural laborers, include agricultural laborers, laborers of villages and cottage industries.
current wage year one is a chassis so that's published by labor bureau used for revising minimum wages new consumer price index introduced in February 2011 CPI rural current wage year 2012 published by CSO central statistic office ministry of statistics CPI urban current wage year 2012 published by CSO CPI combined current wage year 2012 published by CSO currently in India inflation rate is measured with the help of consumer price index combined Consumer for food price index, it is a measure of change in retail price of food items consumed by the people. Current base year, Tojar Bada, published by CSO. Or the Patel Committee, the committee was appointed to examine the current monetary policy framework of the Reserve Bank of India. Major recommendation of the committee are CPI ranges should be between 4% plus minus 2%. Repo rate always should be more than CPI. Proposed formation of monetary policy committee to fix accountability government to help RBI to achieve set targets. GDP deflator used to calculate overall price rise known as implicit price deflator. GDP deflator equal to nominal GDP or real GDP into 100. Here real GDP minus GDP calculated at constant price. Nominal GDP minus GDP calculated at current price. The GDP deflator is the most currently most accurate because it covers all goods and services produced in the economy. The other end is WPI and CPI derived from price quotation from select commodity basket. The government does not use it because GDP deflated data comes quarterly, not weekly or monthly basis. RBI and monetary policy. के बारे में देखते हैं. Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India was established in April 1935. In 1935, under Reserve Bank of India, 1934, on the recommendation of Hilton Young Commission, Central Bank of India, which was, which was nationalized in 1949, Central Office initial was established in Calcutta and later moved to Mumbai in 1937. Official Director, Governor, and not more than four Deputy Governors. Currently, following persons are on the following post: Governor Dr. Rajiv Kumar Patel, Deputy Governor M K Jain, Sri N S Vishwanathan, Dr. Varal. Sri B P Kanangu R B I performs his function under the guidance of the Board of Financial Supervision. Board for Financial Supervision B F S constituted in November 1994. The board is constituted by co-opting four directors from the Central Board and each year by the Governor. Important act administered by the R B I Reserve Bank of India 1934 Public Debt Act 1944 or Government Securities Act 2006 Government Securities Regulation 2007 Banking Regulation Act 1949 Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999 Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Surface Act 2002 Other re relevant acts Negotiable Instrument Act 1881 Companies Act 1956 or Companies Act 2000 Tera Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation Act 1961 Regulation of Rural Bank Act 1971 National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Act 1981 National Housing Bank Act 1987 Competition Act 2002 Indian Coinage Act 2011 Following are the fully owned subsidiary of RBI Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India DICGC Bharatiya Reserve Bank Not Modern Private Limited BRB and PMPL National Housing Bank NHB The first governor of RBI sir was born Smith The first governor of RBI after nationalisation, C D Deshmukh. First woman deputy governor of RBI, K G K J Udesi. RBI emblem tiger and palm tree. What is monetary policy? The policy made by the central bank, Reserve Bank of India, to control the money supply in the economy. Monetary policy committee. The monetary policy committee of India is committee of the Reserve Bank of India that is responsible for fixing the benchmark interest rate in India. Section 45 ZB of the Amendment RBI Act 1934 provides for an empowered six-member monetary policy committee to be constituted by central government to determine the interest rate that is required to achieve the inflation target. The MPC is required to monetary policy committee is required to meet at least four times in a year. Six-member MPC is headed by RBI Governor Rajiv Patel. The members of the monetary policy committee are appointed by the central government and have office for a period of four years. Various tools or instruments for monetary policy this can be divided into. Quantitative and qualitative instruments. Quantitative instruments is open market operation. This method refers to buy and sell of securities, bills and bonds of government by RBI in the open market to expand or contract the amount of money in the banking system. When RBI purchases government securities, liquidity increases because RBI is paying when the 
party some money to buy that security or RBI is pouring additional money into the system. On the reverse, when RBI sells government securities, liquidity decreases because those players are giving their cash to RBI to purchase the securities. Liquidity adjustment facility. Liquidity adjustment facilities also are tool used by RBI to control the short term money supply. Liquidity adjustment facility has two instruments namely repo rate and reverse repo rate. Repo rate the interest rate at which the reserve bank provides loans to commercial banks by mortgaging their debted government securities and treasury bill. Reverse repo rate the interest rate at which the reserve bank borrows from commercial bank by mortgaging its debted government securities and treasury bill. While repo rates injects liquidity into the system, the reverse repo rate absorbs the liquidity from the system. Marginal Standing Facility MSF It is a loan facility for banks to borrow from the Reserve Bank of India in an emergency when it interbank liquidity dries up completely. How is MSF MST different from repo rate? MSF loan facility was created for commercial bank to borrow from RBI in emergency condition where interbank liquidity dries up and there is a volatility in the overnight interest rate. To curb this volatility, RBI allowed them to deposit government securities and get more liquidity from RBI at higher rate than, than the repo rate. Reserve ratio SLR or CRR. SLR statutory liquidity ratio all commercial bank in the country required to keep a given percentage of their demand and time deposit, net demand and time liability or NDTL as liquid assets in the their value as itself. It present the bank from letting all its deposit which is too risky. Net demand and time liability mainly cost consists of time liability and demand liability. Time liabilities include money deposit in fixed deposit, cash certificates called deposit etc. Demand liabilities include money deposit in the saving account, money deposit in the current account, demand drafts etc. Cash reserve ratio. The cash reserve ratio is the amount of funds that the bank are bound to keep with the Reserve Bank of India as a certain percentage of the net demand and time liabilities and detail. Bank cannot lend it to anyone. Bank earns no interest rate or profit on this. What happens when CRR is reduced? When CRR is reduced, this means bank required to keep fewer funds with the RBI and resource available to bank for lending will go up. Bank rate. The bank rate is the rate which is fixed by the RBI at which its rediscount bill of exchange in government securities held by commercial bank. It is also known as discount rate. Bill of exchange is a financial document that has your payment of money by purchaser to the seller for goods purchased. Difference between repo rate and bank rate. Repo rate is a short term measure, on the other hand, bank rate is a long term measure. Quantitative qualitative instrument credit rationing. In this RBI control the maximum amount of credit flow to a certain sector. RBI may also make compulsory for the banks to provide certain fraction of their loans to certain sectors such as priority sector leading sector. Selective credit control. Selective credit control is a tool in the hands of Reserve Bank of India to restrict bank finance against sensitive commodities. Margin requirement RBI can prescribe margin against collateral. For instance, lend only 70%, 70 rupees for rupees 100 value property. Margin requirement being 30%. If RPI raises margin requirement, customer will be able to borrow less. Moral situation. Moral situation refers to the method of request, a method of advice by the RBI to commercial banks to the take certain measures as per the trends of the economy. Direct action. RBI ensure issues certain guidelines from time to time based on the current situation in the economy. These guidelines should be followed by bank. If any bank violates these guidelines, RBI penalize them. Current policy rates. Policy repo rate 6.25%, reverse repo rate 6.00%, marginal standing facility rate 6.50%, bank rate 6.50%, reserve ratio SLR CRR is 4%, SLR 19.50%. Different types of unemployment. Different type of unemployment. Unemployment. It is a situation in which people are ready and willing to work at the existing rate of wages, but still they cannot get work. Measurement, unemployment, and employment are done by NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization in India. National Sample Survey Organization divides people in the following three categories ABC, working people engaged in an economic activity, not working, looking for work. Third, neither working nor looking for work. People in category A are called the workforce. People in category B are called unemployed. People in category A and B are called labor force. People in category C are called not in the labor force. Number 
unemployed equal to labor force minus work force. Unemployment data in India are kept under the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Type of unemployment. Structural unemployment. Caused by structural change, that is example technical, technological change, growing population, etc. Frictional unemployment. When people save from one job to another and remain unemployed during this interval period. Cyclic unemployment. Demand deficiency unemployment. When people are thrown out from the job due to the decrease in demand. Example recession. Disguised unemployment. In this type of employment, people are employed but their marginal productivity is zero. Example, one man is engaged in some agriculture work. His friend joins him but the productivity of both remains same. His friends come under disguised unemployment. Educated unemployment. If one educated person not able to get a suitable job suited to his qualification. Example, engineering graduate is getting clerk post instead of engineering post. Open unemployment. A condition in which people do not find any work to do. It includes both skilled and unskilled people. Under unemployment, when people obtain work but their efficiency and capability are not utilized at their optimum and they contribute to the production up to a limited level. Voluntary unemployment. In this type of unemployment, jobs are available but individual wants to remain idle. Example, lazy people, people who have ancestor property do not want one. Natural unemployment. 2 to 3 percent considered natural and cannot be eliminated. Chronic unemployment causes due to the long term unemployment present in the economy. Seasonal unemployment. In this type of unemployment, people are unemployed for a few months of the year. Example farmers. Inflation types and effects. Inflation the general rise in the price level of goods and services. It is estimated as the percentage rate of change in the price index over the reference time period. Currently in India, inflation rate is measured with the help of the consumer price index combined base year to year bar. The April 2014, the inflation rate was measured with the help of WPI wholesale price index. Rate of inflation equal to current period price index minus reference period price index or reference period price index into 100 based on the types of inflation based on the rate of rising inflation creeping inflation price rise at the very small rate less than 3 percent it is considered safe and essential for the economy second walking or trotting inflation price rise as at moderate rate 3 percent or 10 percent in the between the inflation at this rate is warning signal for the economy running inflation price rise at high rate 10% to 20% it affects the economy adversely hyperinflation or galloping inflation or runway inflation price rise at very high rate 20% to 100% this, this situation brings the total collapse of the economy based on the causes demand pool inflation cost pool push inflation based on the causes demand pool inflation when inflation arises due to the higher demand for goods and services over the limited supply cost Demand pool inflation when inflation arises due to the higher demand for goods and services over the limited supply. Cost push inflation when inflation arises due to the higher input cost. Example raw material wages the sector for goods and services over the limited supply. Other definition. Deflation. It is opposite of inflation. The reduction of general price level of price in an economy. In this price index measured is negative. Stagflation. When stagnation and inflation coexist in the economy. Stagnation, low national income growth and high unemployment. Disinflation, when the rate of inflation is at a slower rate. Example, if the inflation of last month was 4% and the rate of inflation in the current month is 3%. Disinflation, when the rate of inflation is at a slower rate. Deflation, deliberate action of government to increase the rate of inflation to redeem the economy from a deflationary situation. Reflation. Deliberate action of government to increase the rate of inflation to redeem the economy from a deflationary situation. Core inflation. It is a measure of price rise in the economy excluding the price rise of some product whose price is volatile and temporary in nature. Core inflation. It is a measure of price rise in the economy excluding the price rise of some product whose price is volatile and temporary in nature. Effects of inflation. Redistribution distribution of income and wealth. Due to the effect of inflation, some group of people Losses, losses and another group people gains.
example in case of debtors and creditors debtor gainer creditor loser in case of producers and consumer producer gainer consumer loser effects on production and consumption due to inflation the demand decreases which curtails the production people try to use fewer services which led to a decrease in the consumption unfavorable balance of payment export decreases and import de increases from other countries which lead to a decrease in the forex reserve export decreases and import increases unfavorable balance of payment export decreases and import increases from other countries which lead to a decrease in the forex reserve measures to control inflation credit control it is used by rbi it increases in uh, increase in direct tax due to the increase in direct tax people have the less money available to them and low demand from them leads to a lower price price control by fixing the maximum price limit by authorities trade measures maintain proper supply in the economy by export and import of goods and services trade measures maintain proper supply in the economy by export and import of goods and services poverty in india poverty a condition in which section of the society is unable to fulfill its basic necessity of life it is of two types absolute poverty relative poverty absolute poverty in this we calculate an aggregate value a figure expressing per capita consumer expenditure of the minimum quantity of commodity which are necessities of life the population whose level of income is below this aggregate value is below poverty line in this measure of poverty we express the number of poor as a proportional of the total population this measure is also known as the head count ratio population whose level of income is below an aggregate value is bpl in this measure of poverty we express the number of poor as the proportion of the total population the measure this measure is known as the head count ratio 13% of people are bpl why we prepare consumption expenditure method instead of income in per capita income we cannot separate dependent people children seniors who are consuming but not earning so for correct data calculation we prepare consumption expenditure method instead of income relative poverty in this type of poverty a person may be above below poverty line but happens to be poor poor in comparison with other person whose income is above his income or consumption in this type of poverty calculation income or consumption distribution of the population in different percentile group is estimated and compared them it provides inequality present among the total population quantile ratio is one of the measures of inequality quantile income ratio average income of richest 20% or average income of poorest 20% poor poverty estimation in india british early estimation of poverty was done by the by narogenes book poverty and un british rule in india published in 1901 1936 the national planning committee gave an idea about poverty in undivided india but data provided by them was not considered as poverty data in the country so poverty estimation in independent india uh, means dr b m dandekar and nilantharath 1968 to 1969 fixed desired minimum nutrition equal to 2250 calories per day in rural money required to purchase this amount of nutrition is 170 rupees per year in urban money required to purchase this amount of nutrition is 271 rupees per year using this reference they found that 40% of rural residents and 50% of urban residents were below the poverty line in 1962-61 planning commission expert group poverty line concept was first introduced by planning commission working group of the planning commission in 1962 alag committee chairman yk alag till 1979 poverty estimation was done by on the basis of lack of income but in 1979 yk alag committee adopted a new approach based on household per capita consumption expenditure basis this committee defined the first poverty line in india daily consumption fixed by the committee in rural 2400 calories per day daily consumption fixed by committee is in urban equal to 2100 calories per day not in rural india value of consumption was put high because of physical labor they undergo lakada wala committee formed in 1989 chairman dt lakadawala submitted report in 1993 daily consumption fixed by committee in rural 2400 calories per day daily consumption fixed by committee in urban 2100 calories per day the committee used cpi il and cpil for the estimation of poverty not cpil consumer price index for industrial level consumer price index for agricultural level results total people were under bpl in 1993 to 94 36% total people under bpl in 2004 to 5 27.5% and olkar committee formed in 2005 chairman suresh d tendulkar submitted its report in 2009 change the calorie based estimation to nutrition health and other expenditure based initiatives a new term poverty line basket plb which is the basket of all goods selected to determine poverty consumption quantity fixed the same for both rural and urban people but price differs daily per capita expenditure for rural is rupees 27 daily per capita expenditure for urban rupees 33 results overall poverty 
37.2 percent in the year 2004 to 5 rural 41.8 percent in the year 2004 to 5 urban 525.7 percent in the year 2004 to 5 Rangarajan committee formed in June 2012. Chairman Rangarajan submitted its report in June 2014. Again, adopted the calorie based approach which was used in the past. Delhi car per capita expenditure for rural is rupees 33. Delhi per capita expenditure for urban is rupees 47. Real to overall poverty 29.5% in the year 2011 to 12. Rural 13.9% in the year 2011 to 12. Urban 26.4% in the year 2011 to 12. Reserve Bank of India Report 2012 State Bank having list poverty Goa 5.09% Union Territory having list poverty Andaman and Nicobar 1% State having highest poverty Chhattisgarh 39.93% Union Territory having highest poverty Tatran and Nagar Haveli 39.31% World Bank Report Poverty line whose income is less than $1.9 per day According to the 2015 World Bank Report in 2011 India had 12.4% people below the poverty line According Asian Development Bank report, according to 2015 Asian Development report, poverty in India 20.121.9% for 2014. History of Banking in India History of banking in India before and, out and after independence. Phases of Indian banking system. The advancement in the Indian banking system is classified into three distinct phases. The pre independence phase that is before 1947, the second phase from 1947 to 1991, third phase 1991 and beyond. So, first one, first phase. The phase is characterized by the presence of large number of banks, more than 600. Banking system commenced in India with the foundation of Bank of Hindustan in Calcutta, now Calcutta in Chatra Sultar, which ceased to be operated in 1832. After that, many banks came out which were not successful, like General Bank of India 1786 to 1791, then second over the Commercial Bank 1881 to 1958, the first Commercial Bank of India, whereas some uh, are successful and continue to lead even now, like Alava, then established 1865, Punjab National Bank established 1894 with headquarters in Lahore, that time Bank of India. 1906 established Bank of Baroda, 1908 Central Bank of India, 1911. While some other like Bank of Bengal is still state in 06, Bank of Mumbai, Bank of Andhras uh, merged into single entity in 1921, which came to be known as Imperial Bank of India. Imperial Bank of India was later renamed in 1955 as the State Bank of India. In April 1935, the Reserve Bank of India was formed based on the recommendation of Hilton. A young Commission set up in 1926. In this time period, most of the banks were small in size and suffered from the high rates of failures. As a result, people public confidence is low in these banks and deposit mobilization was also very slow. People continued to rely on the unorganized sector money lenders in Indian banks. The second phase from 1947 to 1991. Broadly, the main characteristic feature of this phase is the nationalization of the bank with this view of the economic planning. Nationalization emerged as the effective measures need for nationalization in India. The bank mostly created to, uh, to the needs of large industries, big business houses, sectors such as agricultural, small scale industries and export was lagging behind the poor masses continued to be exploited by the money lenders following this in the year 1949, 1st January, the Reserve Bank of India was nationalized. The 14 commercial banks were nationalized on the 19 July 1969, Sirmati Indra Gandhi was the Prime Minister of India during 1969. The following bank are nationalized Central Bank of India, Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bank of Baroda, United Commercial Bank, Canara Bank, Dana Bank, United Bank, Syndicate Bank, Allahabad Bank, Indian Bank, Union Bank of India, Bank of Maharashtra, Indian Overseas Bank, six more. Commercial bank were nationalized in April 1980. These are mentioned below. Andhra Bank, Corporation Bank, New Bank of India, Oriental Bank of Commerce, Punjab and Sith Bank, Vijay Bank. Meanwhile, on the recommendation of the Narsiman Committee, Regional Rural Bank were formed on October 1, 
1975, the objective behind the formation of regional rural bank was to serve the large and residual population of rural areas and promoting financial inclusion with a view to meet the specific requirement for from the different sectors that is agriculture, housing, foreign trade industry, some apex level banking institutions were also set up like NABAD established 1982, Axin established 1982, NSB established 1988, CDB established 1990. Impact of nationalization improved efficiency in the banking system since the public's confidence got boosted. Sectors such as agriculture, small and medium enterprise industries started getting funds which led to economic growth. Increased penetration of bank branches in rural areas, third phase 1991 and beyond. This period saw a remarkable, remarkable growth in the process of development of bank with the liberalization of economic policies even after the nationalization and the subsequent regulation that followed a large portion of masses is untouched by the banking services considering this in 1991. The Narsiman committee gave its recommendation that is to allow the entry of private sector players into the banking system. Following this, RBI gave license to 10 private entities out of which few survived the market demand which are ICIC, HDFC, Axis Bank, Investment Bank, DCB. In 1998, the Narsiman committee again recommended entry of Mufo, more private place as a result the RBI gave license to the following new which got on Mahendra Bank, Doja, AKS Bank, Doja, Char. In 2013-14, third round of bank licensing took place and in 2015, IDFC Bank and Bandhan Bank emerged. In order to further financial inclusion, RBI also proposed to set up two new kinds of bank that is payment banks and small banks. Points to note, Allahabad Bank established in 1865. Allahabad Bank is the oldest public sector bank in India, having branches all over India and serving the customer for the last 145 years. Imperial Bank of India was later renamed in 1955 as the State Bank of India. Punjab National Bank is the first bank purely managed by Indians, which was established in Lahore in 1895. First, truly South Bank, that is Central Bank of India, is called India's first truly South Bank, which was established in 1911 and wholly owned and managed by Indians. Union Bank of India was inaugurated by Mahatma Gandhi in 1919. Osborne Smith was the first governor of the Reserve Bank. C.D. Desmond was the first Indian to be the governor of the Reserve Bank. The first Indian bank to open in overseas branches, Bank of India. It, it established a branch of, in London in 1946. State Bank of India in, has the maximum number of overseas branches. So we have seen the history of Banking India. कैपिटल मार्केट हम इसमें पढ़ेंगे कैपिटल मार्केट के बारे में क्या कर रहे क्या Financial market is a market where borrowing and lending of funds of all individual institution companies and of the government takes place in India financial market can be divided into two main categories a money market b capital market in this article we will read the basic capital market stock market their types and features money market it is used for short term credit generally we use it for borrowing and lending of money up to one year it includes reserve bank of india commercial bank cooperative banks regional rural banks some and bfc etc it is used for long term credit generally we use it for borrowing and lending of money above one year it includes stock exchanges, housing, finance companies, insurance companies, etc. All the institutional institutions listed in the capital market are called non-banking financial companies, but it is not necessary that all NBFCs are the part of the capital market. NBFCs. NBFC is a condemned company registered under the Companies Act 1956. It differs from the bank in the following aspects. It cannot accept demand deposit. NBFC is a company registered under the Company Act 1956. It differs from bank in the following aspects. It cannot as accept demand deposits. They do not have insurance coverage on their deposit. However, bank deposit have insurance coverage on their deposit insurance and credit guarantee purpose. Composition of capital market. It is mainly divided into three categories. Securities market development, financial institution, financial institution, intermediary. Securities market. It deals with the shares and debt instrument. These instruments are used for fundraising. In shares instrument, we include equity share, preference share, derivative share and this instrument investors have a partner in the capital, profit and loss. In a debt instrument we include bonds, debenture etc. In this instrument we need to pay interest to the debt instrument holder regardless of profit or loss debentures. In this lender lends money to companies with some surety, maybe plant, machinery etc. But in case of bonds lender lends money to the companies without any surety. 
shares are mainly of two types the first one is equity share and second one is preference share in equity share holders has claimed over the capital profit and loss in preference share holder is entitled to have a fixed amount of dividend in case of the closing of company preferences shareholders have the preferential rights to get back to the capital paid for trading of security we have primarily new issue and secondary old issue market primary new issue market in this security issued by the issuer and purchased by public purchase of new or fresh security is carried on this in the primary market if any company is share for the first time it is called initial public offering that is ipo if any company that has already issued share they can again issue share to raise additional fund it is known as follow on public offering apo secondary old issue market buying and selling of securities which are already issued in new issue primary market there are two platforms for the trading in this market which are stock exchange on listed securities over the counter exchange security which are not listed on any stock exchange term used in the securities market declared price issue fixed price book building issue price fixes according to demand merchant banker is who appoints it you know behalf of it to carry out fund raising activities authorized capital maximum amount authorized by higher official on the, of the company that can be raised by the company issuer capital actual amount issued by the company subscriber capital actual amount subscribed to the public underwriter it is a financial intermediary whose promise is to purchase of and subscribe capital called up capital company collects the fund in installment and portion of money called from subscriber is called up capital paid up capital the actual amount paid by subscriber reserve capital and demanded of money portion right issue in the of this offer of security to existing shareholder by apo bonus issue the issue of share as against as profit of existing shares sweet equity issue offer of share to employees against their hard work of their company cash trading sale and purchase of securities on the price of trading forward trading both buyer and seller sign in an agreement to purchase of securities on pre agreed price derivatives it does not have independent value it has values only because of underlying securities which need to be traded demo utilization process of transferring of share from brokers to public stock exchange there are two important stock exchange in india nsc and bsc national stock exchange and bombay stock exchange it was a national stock exchange it was established on the recommendation of herwani committee in 1992 nifty and nifty junior are the indices of uh, national stock exchange nifty major share price of top 50 and later top 50 by nifty junior bombay stock exchange it is asia's old stock exchange and was established in 1975 sensex sensitive index is the index of bharat stock exchange Bombay Stock Exchange Sensex measures share price movement of top 30 companies. Depositors in this investors keep their security in demat dematerialized form. Currently, there are two deposits in India: NSDL National Security Deposit Limited, which is located in Mumbai; CDS CDSL Central Depository Services Limited, which is also located in Mumbai. Development Financial Institution. They provide a long-term loan, entrepreneurial assistance, technical advice, etc. Example of these are IDBI, Exim Bank, etc. Financial intermediaries, RBI regulated asset finance companies, loan company by investment company, SEBI regulated venture capital fund, merchant banking companies, stock broking companies. Balance of payment 2018. International Monetary Fund (IMF) defines the balance of payment. as a statistical statement that summarizes economic transaction between resident and non resident during a specific time period the balance of payment thus includes all transaction showing transaction in goods change of ownership unequated transfer transaction in goods services and income between an economy and the rest of the world changes of ownership and other changes changes in the economy's monetary hold special drawing rights str and financial claims on and liabilities to rest of the world unregulated liquidated transfer transfer of money in which nothing is expected in return foreign aid debt for givenness etc these transactions are categorized into current account capital account and financial account capital account is redesignated as capital and financial account the balance of payment is basically the record of all international financial transaction made by a country's residents the balance of payments tell tells us whether the country has a surplus or deficit it also reveals whether the company produces enough economic output to pay for its growth when balance of payment is deficit it implies a balance of payment deficit means the country imports more goods services and capital than its exports the country must borrow from other countries to pay for its imports in the short term the that fuels that economic growth but in the long term the country becomes a net consumer net not a producer of the world's economic output the country goes into debt to pay for consumption instead of investing in future growth if the deficit continues for long the country get 
gets into the debt trap and might end up selling its assets assets to pay off its debt when balance of payment is surplus it implies a balance of payment surplus means that country export more than its imports the country basically save more than its earns this boosts the capital formation with its additional income they might even land outside the country a surplus boost economic growth in the short term in the long run the country becomes too independent too dependent on export driven growth it must encourage its resident to spend more a larger domestic market will protect the country from exchange rate fluctuation balance of payment component the balance of payment broadly divided into two accounts namely current account capital and financial account current account the current account measures the transfer of real resources goods services income and transfer between an economy and the rest of the world the current account is further subdivided into merchandise account and invisible account the merchandise account consists of transactions relating to exports and imports of goods in the invisible account there are three broad categories namely non factor services such as travel transportation insurance and miscellaneous services transfer which do not involve any value on exchange and income which includes compensation for employees and investment income current account deficit current account deficit cad equal to trade deficit plus net income from abroad plus net transfer note here trade in the deficit equal to export minus import so we can see here that trade deficit and current account deficit both are different and the trade deficit is one component of current account deficit capital account and financial account the capital and financial account reflect the net changes in financial claim on the rest of the world the former balance of payment capital account has been redesigned redesigned as the capital and financial account as per the fifth edition of balance of payment the capital account can be broadly broken up into two categories namely now debt non debt flows such as direct and portfolio investment debt flows such as external assistance commercial borrowing non resident deposit etc the financial accounts records and economic transaction in external financial assets and liabilities all components are classified according to types of investment or by functional subdivision direct investment portfolio investment other investment reserve receipts assets the sum of the current account and the capital account indicates the overall balance which could either be in surplus or in deficit the moment in overall balance is reflected in changes in the international reserves of the country different types of fund government of india in this one we are going to see introduction of union budget so the constitutional provision the constitution of india has a provision article 112 for such a document called annual financial statement which is usually refers to the term budget The budget is a statement of a receipt and expenditure of a government in a financial year, which begins on 1st April and ends on 31st March. This receipt and expenditure of the government are in three parts: Consolidated Fund of India Contingency, Fund of India Public Account of India. The budget has three sets of data for every concerned sector or sub-sector of the economy. They are actual data of the preceding year, provisional data of the current year, budgetary estimates for the following year. The budget contains estimates of revenue and capital receipts. ways are meant to raise the revenues estimates of expenditures the economy and financial policy of the coming year that is taxation proposal spending program and introduction of new schemes or project different types of fund of government of india consolidated fund contingency fund the consolidated fund comprises all revenues received by the government including the loans raised by it received from recoveries of loans granted by it tax and other revenues this fund was established under article 2661 of constitution of india the consolidated fund comprises all revenues as received by the government including the loans raised by it received from recoveries of loans granted by it tax and other revenues this fund was established under article 2661 of the constitution of india parliament authorization is required for any withdrawn for this fund contingency fund the contingency fund is the fund set aside for the government to meet emergency expenditure that cannot wait uh, for the authorization this fund is established under article 267 of the constitution of india this fund is kept at the disposal of the president public account of india public account comprise money the government public account comprise money the government gets from various scheme like the small saving schemes or dedicated fund like provident fund deposit and advances pro public accounts comprise money the government gets from various schemes like the small saving scheme or dedicated funds like provident funds deposits and advances this fund was established under article 266 sub clause 2 of the constitution of india budget in the parliament first the budget is presented in the lok sabha by the finance minister and he gives a budget speech then the general discussion takes place in the house after which it sends it to the rice sabha for the discussion after the discussion is over the house is adjourned for 3 to 4 weeks during this year the 24 departmental standing committee examine and discuss in detail the demand for grants of the concerned minister and prepares reports on them with consideration of these reports voting of the demand for grant will take place the demand will presented ministry wise a demand will granted after it has been voted after one after 
Article uh, so there of the constitution contains the provision of demand for grants. Voting of demands for grant is the exclusive privilege of the Lok Sabha, that is Rai Sabha, which can only discuss it and has no power to vote. Rai Sabha, which can only discuss, it has no power to vote. Totally 26 days are allotted for the voting of demands. On the last day, the speaker puts all the remaining demands to vote and disposes of them, whether they have been discussed or not. This is called guillotine. Totally 26 days are allotted for the voting of demands. On the last day, the speaker puts all the remaining demands to vote and disposes of them whether they have been discussed or not. This is called guillotine. So the amount which is demanded by the minister cannot get it without the grants voted by the Lok Sabha. Motion in the parliament. During the time of the voting on the demand for grants, member of the parliament can also move motion to reduce any demand for grant. Motion in parliament. During the time of voting on the demand for grants members of the parliament can also move motion to reduce any demand for grant such motion are public cut policy policy cut motion economic cut motion token cut motion policy cut motion it represents the disapproval of the policy underlying the demand and the amount of the demand be reduced to rupees one economic cut motion in this amount of the demand is reduced by a specific amount token cut motion in this motion the amount of the demand reduced to rupees 100 to ventilate a specific grievance which is within the sphere of responsibility of the government of india vote on account before the starting of the new financial year the government need to keep enough finance in order to allow it to run the administration of the country remains article x solar of the constitution contain the vote on account provisions this allowed for the government to fund its expenses for a short period of time or until a full budget is paced generally the vote on account is taken for two months only appropriation bill it is in, uh, introduced in the Lok Sabha after passing of demand for grants to give authority to the government to incur expenditure from and out of the Consolidated Fund of India. It is introduced in Lok Sabha after passing of demand for grants to give authority to the government to incur expenditure from and out of the Consolidated Fund of India. No money shall be withdrawn from Consolidated Fund of India except under appropriation made by the law Article 266 Finance Bill. It is introduced in the Lok Sabha after passing of appropriation bill. It is introduced in the Lok Sabha after passing of appropriation bill to give effect to the government's taxation proposal which are introduced in the Lok Sabha immediately after the presented of the general budget finance bill. It is introduced in the Lok Sabha after passing of appropriation bill to give effect to the government's taxation proposal which are introduced in the Lok Sabha immediately after the presentation of the general budget types of finance bill, money bill. These are financial bills which contain provision related to matter listed in article X to thus sub clause 1 sub clause A. It requires the prior recommendation of the president of before presented in Lok Sabha. Only minister can introduce it in Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha only having the power to vote in case of money bill. Right Sabha can only can advise Lok Sabha. There is no provision of joint sitting in case of money bills. Finance bill category 1, finance bill category. It requires the prior recommendation of president of, of before presented in Lok Sabha. But in this case, Right Sabha has the power to reject this bill. There is uh, provision of joint sitting in this type of bills. Finance bill category 2. These are finance bills which do not contain provision related to matter listed in article 10 economic theory micro economics notes economic theory is a very important topics in the micro novel so economic theory micro economics are important curves lorenz curve first one is the lorenz curve is a graphical representation of income distribution in the society is was given by Max or Lawrence in 1905 it is used to analyze inequality prevailing in the population in this graph the cumulative percentage of the national income is plotted against the cumulative percentage of household the degree to which the curve sags away from the lines of perfect equality is the measure of the inequality in society it is given by Guinness coefficient Guinness coefficient it is the proportion of the asserted reason with the respect to the area corresponding to the line of perfect equality higher the value more is the inequity inequality in society line of perfect equality cumulative percent of national income cumulative percent of household population lawrence curve laffer curve laffer curve represents the relation between tax collection and levy tax rates by the statute authorities it states that as the tax rate increases from the low level tax collection also increases but as the tax rate increases beyond a Critical limit tax collection start falling. This can be due to lower profitability and higher incentive to cheat associated with higher taxes. So tax collection, tax rate, Leffer curve, T equal to 40%, Phillips curve. It was given by a uh, William Phillips at uh, New Zealand Economist. According to this, th there is an inverse and stable relationship between inflation and unemployment as one falls, other increase. Inflation, unemployment rate, Phillips curve. There is a 
also a term which defines the simultaneous existence of high inflation and high unemployment that is low growth with high inflation which is known as stagflation kuznets curve kuznets curve is based on a hypothesis forwarded by an economist simon kuznets according to the hypothesis when a country starts developing economic inequalities first increases for a period of time but after a threshold when a certain average income is attained economic inequalities begin to decrease it is thus represented as an inverted u shaped graph as shown below inequalities income per capita similar in the line is the environmental kuznet curve environmental kuznet curve it shows that the relationship between economic progress on one hand and environment degradation over a of time caused in lieu of the of that economic progress it says that as the economy starts the journey of development pollution pollution in the first phase pollution in first phase but with the further development of economy pollution rates begin to decline and eventually both economic progress and environment maintenance go hand in hand environmental degradation economic development environmental kuznet curves when environment economic stage of growth are polluted on the x axis and environmental degradation on the y axis the environmental kuznet curve is given by inverted u shape grissom law grissom law states that bad money drives hot good it means if a country there are two currencies the overvalued currency cheaper one will drive the under valued precious or expensive one out of use this is because people start holding the undervalued currency as a store of value and eventually that will eliminated from circulation this law was named after an english financier sir thomas grissom 1519 to 1579 opportunity cost value of the loss in a good one account of the next best alternative or choice organ in availing the best alternative or choice available rather than the next best is known as opportunity cost of the chosen alternative in simple words it refers to the value one decides to give up in availing any opportunity or in other words what have you and what have you lost while opting for an option is the opportunity cost of your choice serial number articles of opportunity cost free goods like clean air abundant fresh water what is the opportunity cost no same so common goods in abundant no common goods scarce yes government expense and duty defense yes government free visits to citizens yes public goods like road uh, railways infrastructure yes the opportunity cost is considered to be zero for natural occurring abundance resources like free unpolluted air water etc and also for common goods like grazing land ocean sector for government expenditure the opportunity cost is never zero because the authorities always have choices to make so whatever is chosen there would be exist something on on as well like if the government decides to build a bridge the government could have spent the price on to increasing more personal to ensure safety in the case of freebies for consumer or citizen there is no opportunity cost because it is transferred from the them to government products and possibility curve with the available amount of resources and technology the various alternative combination of production of a set of two goods are plotted to give up production possibility curve it is also known as production possibility frontier or transversal curve the curve help in deciding what to produce as the curve for providing more to production possibility available or to what type is Gracias.